Amazing discoveries concerning our space have been made once more. The amazing revelation about our sun was just made by the James Webb Space Telescope. For the first time, the study of a far-off star provides new insights into the enigma of star creation and provides us with an image of our sun just after it was born. Could you have ever imagined that the new space telescope would provide us with an entirely new perspective on the universe? Though it was always going to be somewhat better than the previous Hubble telescope, scientists are often in awe of how much better James Webb is. Every new image from the super telescope is now eagerly anticipated by amateur astronomers and space enthusiasts. Together, let's marvel at some of the telescope's most recent technological marvels. The Whirlpool Galaxy, also known as Messier 51 or NGC 5194, is a massive spiral galaxy located 23.1 million light years distant. This amazing and razor-sharp photograph captures its spiral arms. The peculiar color pattern of the supernova 2022 AA in the spiral galaxy pair, ARP 299, is captivating. Thanks to Webb's technology, even an old cosmic acquaintance like the Ring Nebula glows in fresh beauty. In addition to giving us amazing views of the cosmos' tremendous beauty, James Webb's filter technologies have allowed us to examine the formations and several other discoveries using the telescope in a way that has never been possible before in human history. We can now even see what our sun looked like in its early phases of formation, thanks to the study of a very unusual star. Stars don't just develop in that manner. Ever pondered the true process of star formation? Theoretically, it is initially just a group of gas and dust that is propelled by external factors like star pressure or the impact of a supernova explosion. The cloud gets closer together due to gravity as it rotates faster and faster, increasing in density. After that, the center's temperature and pressure keep rising and eventually start to boil, which is when nuclear fusion actually starts. A star is created. After that, the fusion process lasts for millions or perhaps billions of years. About 4.5 billion years ago, our sun underwent this process, and it is still glowing now. The cloud from which the sun originated still provides the majority of the components needed for fusion. Initially, all we know about the origin of stars was purely speculative. The method was pieced together using fundamental physics, with the remaining parts being inferred from Einstein's relativity formulae. It wasn't until much later that they witnessed the first newborn stars in the universe firsthand and were able to use observations to support their beliefs. How did the youthful sun appear? We must examine Herbig Haro 211 if we wish to learn what our star looked like in the early stages of its existence. We now have a distinct view of what our sun may have looked like in its early stages thanks to the amazing picture of this star that the James Webb Space Telescope has supplied. The extremely young star in the center is Herbig Harrow 211, or HH 211, with bipolar matter jets to its left and right. In essence, Herbig Harrow objects are space phenomena connected to the development of newborn stars and star forming regions. They have the names of the two astronomers who made the remarkable and intriguing discoveries of these objects in the 1950s, George Herbig and Guillermo Harrow. Imagine if what seems to be a quiet, even reverent star birth is actually traveling at supersonic speed over intergalactic space. The bright areas surrounding the young star are really the Herbig Harrows. They originate from the discharge of stuff into interstellar space by newborn stars, which is made possible by their high velocity. Thus, the protostar in this picture provides an indication of what our sun may have looked like a few tens of thousands of years ago, when it was just 8% of its present mass, and only 4.5 billion years old. In the early stages of their existence, young stars such as this one absorb more material from their surroundings and develop dramatically. 
Later stages, nevertheless, see stars contract once again. A very tiny amount of mass is lost by our sun as well. The solar wind, a steady stream of charged particles blasted from the sun's surface into space, is mostly responsible for the mass loss of the sun. The sun loses mass on average of 4.5 million tons each second, according to experts. Although this seems like a lot at first, it is actually quite little when considering the sun's entire mass. Our sun's overall mass has changed very little throughout its whole lifespan due to the yearly mass loss that has occurred as it has grown older, and this will likely continue for some time. Our star is only entering its middle years of life. Why are jets released by the young star? HH211's jets are vibrant, matter-ejecting streamers of energy that shoot out from the young star and sparkle in space. Actually, the primary materials in these jets are gas and dust, which are traveling across space at very high speeds. These bright streams accompany nearly all herbig Hiro objects. They are important in the investigation of the enigmas surrounding star formation and the interactions between newly formed stars and their surroundings. HH211's jets propagate in opposing directions because they are bipolar. They expand both downward and upward into space along the young star's axis of revolution. These jets are known for traveling at incredibly high speeds. The massive energy generated by the interaction of materials inside the protostar is what gives rise to this rapid speed. Shock fronts with higher temperatures and densities are produced when the jets collide with the interstellar medium. The jet material encounters dust and interstellar gas in the shock fronts. Once again, these shock fronts provide a vibrant spectacle that James Webb expertly photographed. Now that the telescope can record and show such a unique light intensity, herbig Harrow objects like HH211 may be examined in even more depth. At around 1,000 light-years away, this object's surroundings are revealed in great detail by light. The components involved, the density of dust and gas accumulations, and the velocities at work surrounding the item are all revealed by the light waves. The scientists discovered that the jets are abundant in chemicals such as silicon monoxide, molecular hydrogen, and carbon monoxide after looking over the data from HH211. Being one of the youngest and nearest stars to expel debris, HH211 is a prime candidate for investigation, according to the researchers. We can now more precisely and attentively track the formation of stars than ever before thanks to the James Webb Space Telescope. What appearance did the earliest stars have? If I told you that we truly don't know how the universe's initial stars were created, would you believe me? It may seem absurd, yet that is the case. Such a star has never been observed or thoroughly examined by a researcher. However, why is such the case in reality? It's difficult to see the early stages of the cosmos, though. The expansion of space causes a significant stretching of the light that reaches us, shifting it toward the red spectrum. Thus far, James Webb has been able to distinguish between two types of light signals, blurry and dark red. Indeed, we still don't know if they are indeed galaxies or how to identify individual stars inside these structures. It appears nearly unfeasible, unless it's a fortunate accident. The Star of the Dawn, WHL0137LS, is among the earliest single stars ever found. It was only notable because the gravitational lensing effect greatly enlarged it. When an extremely large object, such a galaxy or even a black hole, induces a curvature in the upstream spacetime, the gravitational lensing effect always results. In certain cases, the curvature serves as a convex lens, magnifying background objects to the point that individual stars that are normally invisible to us become visible. In the grand scheme of things, they are just too little. Thus, 
WHL0137LS's finding was genuinely fortunate. An other object that is most likely among the earliest single stars is SMSS J0313003667839, three, as it is more often known. Based on calculations, the age of this star may be as much as 13.6 billion years. This implies that one of the stars belongs to the first generation. These as yet purely speculative stars are known to scientists as population two stars. The star's progenitors most likely originated from clouds that were left behind after the Big Bang as primordial gases and dust. As the cosmos experienced further force changes, these clouds vibrated, compacted, collapsed under their own weight, and started the process of fusion. I believe that all of these early star types were enormous and massive in comparison to stars today. The lack of heavy elements was thought to have played a major role in the development of the first extremely massive stars. This indicates that the early stars could only use light elements which had a significant impact on the characteristics of the population three stars. Some of these early stars were thought to be hundreds or even thousands of times more massive than our sun. With their massive mass and nearly pure hydrogen-helium composition, they generated temperatures in the tens of thousands of degrees Celsius along with tremendous radiation. They barely lived for a few hundred thousand years because of these harsh environment. Only when these stars burst into flames did heavy elements start to circulate, providing the building blocks for the eventual development of stars similar to our sun. All of these situations are currently only hypotheses, though. Viewing population three stars at full power would be a dream come true for scientists. Not all evidence points to SM0313's existence. Put simply, this indicates that it was unable to definitively identify the star's age or composition. A fire in 2003 completely destroyed the facility used by scientists to locate what is thought to be the oldest solitary star ever recorded in the history of the cosmos. The astronomy world is now excitedly anticipating James Webb's next attempt to locate the really far-off star. We shall be occupied for a good while with the interesting subject of the development of the earliest stars in the cosmos. The first galaxies are extremely different from what scientists had predicted, as James Webb has already demonstrated. We can't wait to see what surprises this extraordinary telescope will bring. Subscribe to the channel today to ensure you never miss a new video.